Well, it's come to the stage of our in-frame engine overhaul where we have to, we've got the sump off and now we have to hop in underneath and, and have a look. Now, we can turn the flywheel quite easily on this tractor. It's got no compression, we have the head off and it's got very worn rings, I believe. So, first thing to look at is the Conrod caps face the camera. You know, they're, they're an offset cap. And just check that there's numbers there. Now, on mine, I have a number three, a number two, a number one. So look, just check that first and make sure that's okay. It's important to get these caps back in the right place on the same Conrod. So if you don't have that, um, you can just do one center pop mark on the cap and one on the, on the base. So from here, what we need to do is undo the lock tabs. They have a little steel lock tab. The new lock tabs come into kit. So we just need to back them off enough on the ones that we're doing. Now I'll probably take this oil pump out of the way. Um, it helps later on. Later on like now, probably. <laughs> And we'll got a bit of bloody junk on my screwdriver. Well, I probably should have a longer screwdriver, but there's me and the camera and the lights and everything under here at the moment, so it's just um, I'm just trying to be minimalist. Whoop! And hit the camera with the hammer. So we're all still in focus, that's all right, no harm done. But look, at this stage, to get this oil pump out of the way, it's just a matter of finding a 716 spanner. Is that half? Oh, look, that's half inch length. Boy, it's hard to get good help, isn't it? And we'll get this little oil pump out of the way. There's no problem looking at the oil pump while you're here. Probably a sensible thing to do. Now this is driven under your distributor. And there's a little key in here sometimes. Sometimes people put a tractor back together after a rebuild and they have no oil pressure. And what's happened is that they inadvertently push the key out of place on the oil pump drive. So that's just a, a little trick to watch out for anyway. You can buy a new rotor and shaft for the oil pump. No more that I know of. There's no whole housings in that that I'm aware of at least. If you know of some, pop it in the comments. You can never have too many tractor parts available. We're here early in the morning, the shed's just starting to creak with the sun. We usually get a few hours filming in the morning and another few in the afternoon or evening and through the day it just it goes mad. Okay.
That's a tap, not a hit. <laughs> and there's your oil pump drive down here. Now that drives off the camshaft and the other end of that sits up into the distributor. Right, we might be able to get a few more lock tabs undone now. Okay. Now, with these being offset and coming out this way, it's sort of handy, really. Now, if the lock tab didn't go down properly, and sometimes they don't, I have an impact socket here and I just give it a bit of a give it a bit of a hit and that's just to make sure that the socket grips the bolt properly in case you haven't got the tab folded completely back that makes sure that you have a full full depth of the hex on the nut okay I've got my little Ratchet. Now, now, it's not probably how you should treat a ratchet. So we'll just loosen that off for the moment. Same with number four. That's number one. If you hadn't clicked onto that already. the spanner here I may as well just give it a turn and come in through here Yeah, number three is just down here, nice and handy, right in front of the camera. So that's got to be a good thing, doesn't it? So we'll take the cap off here. Now if you leave the bolts up in there and just pull them out, you can use them as a handle and rock it back and forth. And there you go. That's the bearing shell. We'll have a look at them later. A little bit of wear on the crank I can feel, but look, that by the time you put new conrod bearings on, I don't think we'll have any worry. I did notice once I run this tractor earlier that we did have good oil pressure, so I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, we'll get set up and oh, I might be able to show you. On the conrod, there's your number three in there. So the Conrad will have, a, have another number there as well. Alright, we'll get set up and we'll pop this one piston out up to the top. We'll film all that and then there's probably no need to film the whole lot unless we find a bit of trouble there somewhere. Now what I've got here is a piece of broomstick. And look, it's nothing special. It's just a, a soft piece of broom. Nick it off your missus broom handle, don't tell her, by crikey you'd be in trouble. We'll go and spend two dollars and go downtown and buy one. But look, what I like to do is once we, once we have this conrod on done, 
we can push the push the conrod back away. Look at this. There's, there's that that little there's that little compression on those rings that just comes down on its own. And you have two choices here. One is pop the bearing out and so you don't damage it if you're using it again. But look, if you're not using it again and you're going to chuck it, I often leave the bearing in and hit onto the bearing. So we can push that, push that number three up and then I just give that a bump. And we can see that there's number three sitting out. So here we are back at number four now. Just a bit tighter and finger tight. Okay, that rod came off easily. Now, often number four is the most worn. Um, it's furthest away from the oil pump, but you do get feed in. But um, sometimes number four has a bit of bit of other extra wear than the others. But look, that's okay, really. There is wear there, but we we're not worrying about that at this stage. Now get my little bit of wood. Yep. See if I can just push it. Same as the last one. No wonder we didn't have much compression. All right, we'll hop up the top again. We'll grab number four. Now, where are the rings? These two were very close. Yeah, this one was way around, so that's fine. We have one dowel each way on this one at the moment, so that's good. Okay, that's the pistons out. Now, at this stage, there's another little job I like to do, and I'll when just go and number grab it. Three, you can see there's an oil hole there. And when we pull our liners and that out, we need to um, pull the liners and a lot of junk comes down. So at this stage here, I just like to grab a bit of insulation tape, electrical tape, and wrap each journal up. Doesn't have to be neat. But that, this does two things for us. It, um, one, it stops anything from going down the hole in the crank that we don't see because it's, it's hard to get out. And it also, you know, if we've got a bit of threaded rod for the liner puller up there and a few things like that, we're actually protecting the crank surface. So when you're measuring the crank, you need to actually get all this off again, but that's no problem. It's, it's easy enough to do. Then we can roll this around and do the same. So, look, that, that's a good tip for you. Um, Tape all the tape the journals here up, and in a, in the next part of our series here, we'll be turning the crank across to the side there, sort of thing, and we have a liner puller to come down in and pull the liners. So that's going to be it for the moment for pulling the pistons out. The um, hopefully you got something out of that, and the next part of the series will be setting up the liner puller, we'll pull the liners out and 
have a look at what we've got.